Okay, okay. no worries. There's a couple, a couple of disclaimer slides there. Um, you can read those on the copy of the presentation on the ARG website later on. <coughs> so, yeah, firstly, just a brief corporate overview. Um, Pilgrim Gora is located in the Pilbara region of, of Western Australia. As most of us know here, it's uh, probably one of the best places in uh, Western Australia, in fact, Australia, to start a new mining operation. We have one of the largest uh, pegmatite um, resources uh, in, in the world. It's a, a long life, low cost mining operation. Uh, all our offtake is, is secured, in fact sold out for the next 10 years for our 2 million tonne per annum uh, operation. We've got some fantastic uh, offtake partners with Gang Feng Lithium, Great Wall and uh, General Lithium. Uh, major construction works are currently well underway and uh, we're looking at a, uh, a 5 million tonne per annum expansion um, DFS uh, at, at the present moment. So just to look at a corporate snapshot there, um, as at last Friday, the market cap of $1.6 billion. Uh, I started with a company oh, probably nearly three years ago now with a market cap of between uh, $20 million to $50 million, so we've come a long way in a short period of time. What probably the key takeaway from this slide is really, uh, I guess, the, our, our board of directors and the experience in the, in the organisation. Uh, Ken Brinson and Tony Keenan, both uh, mine builders, both have a lot of operational experience in the Pilbara. And we also have a very strong management team with uh, a lot of our guys having a lot of experience in lithium processing and lithium marketing. So moving on to the geology. So this, this slide here is just a, a little cartoon showing just the general evolution of uh, the Pilbara Craton uh, with reference to the Pilgongora district. Uh, it started, um, I guess, early on with an episode of, of, of crustal thinning in the Precambrian. This followed by three phases of, of um, uh, or orogeny, um, ending in the last phase with the, the Turner River uh, orogeny around 2.88 GA. Uh, and it's this phase where we had the intrusion of the split rocks suite, which are highly fractionated Monza granites, and also the LCT pegmatite suites, which form Pilgongora and a number of other um, LCT pegmatite districts uh, within the region. So on that, just the regional geology, um, Pilgongora is one of three major LCT pegmatites in the North Pilbara. Uh, these include Mount Francisco, which Pilbara Minerals also owns, uh, uh, with a joint venture with the Atlas Iron, Wajina, and Pilgongora is over here to the east, uh, located in the East Strelly Greenstone Belt. Uh, East Australia Greenstone Belt is a, a sequence of highly deformed, fault-bounded and mafic-dominated supercrustal rocks which uh, intrude into the Kalindi Bathlith, which you can see here uh, to the west and east of the, the belt. Uh, as you can see on this diagram on, in the middle there, it's quite a relatively well-endowed belt with other uh, minerals, including gold, but to my knowledge, uh, no watermelon-shaped nuggets at this stage have been identified. Uh, looking at the local geology, um, Pilbara's actually done a lot of uh, pretty uh, good work with a, a, a well-known geologist, Dr Mike Gregson. He's done mapping programs on our project in 2016 and 2017. I spent a lot of time in the field uh, mapping all the, the uh, host rocks and pegmatite suites in extreme detail. Um, basically what we can see here uh, is a, a suite of north-northeast trending and, and um, um, northern or west trending uh, green zones, mainly ultramafics, um, basalts and dolerites. There's been four phases of deformation recognised in the area. Uh, the dis distribution pattern of the pegmatites clearly uh, is, is uh, I guess, um, uh, um, likened to the, the, I guess the, the complex um, structural um, deformation here we can see in the middle of the project area. It's all D2 um, fault um, uh, network. Uh, the actual uh, pil um, the pegmatites themselves outcrop it along a uh, roughly a 10 kilometre length from north up at line of sign to Monster uh, down to our eastern, central and our south end uh, projects. Uh, as you can see the, the photograph there in the bottom right hand corner, uh, this is our D1 pegmatite that's located in the, in the central uh, zone there. Just shows you that these pegmatites are, are pretty easy to find, they're all outcropping, fresh at surface. Uh, this particular unit is up to 40 metres wide. So looking at some cross-sections, uh, 
couple of cartoon sections there as well, a couple of uh, natural sections. Um, firstly, the central area there, which is shown by that black line. Uh, we've got a series of uh, re relatively flat-lying pegmatite dikes uh, intruding into the, the Mafic Coast rocks. These are up to 80 metres thick. Um, we also have some sills um, intruding into this area, as you can see in the top left there. This is our D34 zone, all very high-grade um, lithia. Um, the eastern domain uh, in the top right here, the pegmatites are a bit thinner um, and, and dipping a bit uh, or slightly steeper to, to the east. And this photograph here is a, a beautiful shot of a natural cross section up at our monster uh, deposit up in the north, and that's about 20 mo 21 metres thick. Um, it just shows you one of the RC rig there drilling through that. Um, So this slide here just really just shows you, I guess, the main characteristics of the, the, the pegmatite groups within our project area. Uh, as I mentioned before, the pegmatites in the central area breach all the, uh, the geology and, and the D2 uh, faults. Uh, as we move along strike to the north and to the south, the pegmatites tend to follow the strike slip uh, shear zones, the D2, D2, uh, D3 uh, strike slip shear zones. Uh, up at Monster and Linus Fine, the pegmatites tend to uh, sit within some D2 uh, cross structures. Just this next image there on the right-hand side, this really just shows the distribution for grade. One of the important things I haven't mentioned with Pilgrim Gore is uh, not only is it um, a pretty good grade in lithia, we also have a, a, a tantalum credit, which is economic, and which we'll be uh, producing um, once we start mining at Pilgrim Gore. Uh, the distribution of, of tant um, tantalite from north to south uh, generally um, a, a modest grade up to the north, our eastern area is quite high grade um, and similarly in the central area. Once you get past that brown line to off to the south you'll notice that the lithia grades and tantalum grades drop uh, right off to around 1%. Principal uh, pegmatite uh, types within the area. Um, this has been really been derived from a lot of uh, logging of, of diamond drill core um, a lot of mineralogical work by Dr. Marcus Sweetapple, uh, who's also done a lot of work at Wadjana and other pegmatite districts around Western Australia. Uh, what we see here, um, we've basically split our, our logging into, I guess, four key types. The top there is what we call our coarse uh, spodumene, which is anything with crystals greater than one centimetre. Fine, obviously less than one centimetre. These albite zones are generally uh, located on the margins of the pegmatite intrusives. Uh, and then we also have a lot of microcline, k bar, um, I guess mottled throughout the, uh, the, um, the pegmatite intrusives. Yeah, unlike Mount Merriam, which we just listened to, uh, we do have some very, very coarse spodumene crystals. Uh, and this, this particular photograph um, shows some coarse lath-like, uh, very high-grade um, uh, pegmatite ore. These crystals can actually grow up to about a metre long within our product. Uh, this uh, slide here is a little bit difficult to read, but I guess the key point, uh, again, similar to Mount Marion, uh, what I wanted to demonstrate here is that the, the spodumene crystals are generally um, um, have a, cl a kilometre alignment and are, are, are perpendicular to the contacts of the pegmatite intrusives. Uh, the, the grade there distributed through the pegmatites is, is reasonably consistent. Um, and uh, we see this throughout the, much of the deposit. So just a bit about the discovery history. Uh, Pilgrim Gore is really, it's a globally significant hard rock uh, lithium resource. So it's a very high quality spodumene. We're able to deliver not only into the chemical market, which is the battery market, but also into the technical market, which is the glass and ceramics industry. And this is mainly because it's got a very, very low iron content and also low manganese and high um, lithium um, grade. Uh, I think the only other mine that um, is able to do, able to do that obviously is, is green bushes. I guess the other point there you can see there's the the other two development projects at the moment, Altura Mining, which are just off to the, the south of us, um, and then the green are the, the existing operations. So green green bush is clearly the standout of, of of all of them. With our project, we have a massive expansion capacity, which I'll touch on briefly um, in a minute. So just the exploration history, um, again, the, the Pilgrim Gore pegmatite has been known for quite a long time, first discovered in 1907 uh, and were developed as small scale alluvial op operations for tantalite. Uh, slightly large scale operations, alluvial operations in 1978 through to 82 and again from 92 to 96, 
you can see there that's uh, just an aerial shot from uh, showing an old um, alluvial plant which recovered both tin and, and tantalite. Uh, Sons of Gualia did a reasonable amount of work for Tantalum back in 2003 through to 2008 uh, and concluded that the, the grade of the, as a standalone Tantalum deposit wasn't, wasn't quite high enough. Uh, Talison and Global Advanced Metals uh, did several phases of exploration up until about 2014 uh, and unfortunately uh, wasn't a lot of work um, done for, um, for lithium so not, not many of the, uh, the actual samples were assayed for lithium. Uh, in May 2014, Pilgrim Minerals acquired 100% of the project for $250,000. And as I mentioned, as of Friday, we're now worth $1.6 billion. So looking at the, the exploration history, um, I guess the initial work done by John Young and the, and the, the, uh, the, the early exploration team at, up in uh, Pilgongora did a large amount of rock chip sampling um, and, and mapping and really, at that point, um, from the grades we got back from the rock chip, recognised the real potential of Pilgongora as a lithium play. Uh, as a small, small uh, exploration company, they then took a pretty bold step in taking a bulk sample from the project, sent that off to Germany, to Anzaplan, where it was analysed, uh, and came back with some very positive results, uh, being able to um, produce a, a high-grade concentrate, low iron, that was suitable for the glass and ceramics industry. Uh, from that point on, uh, there's been uh, several um, drill campaigns. The first campaign was uh, just uh, done on 100 by 50 metre centres. Uh, this led to uh, expanded drilling on 50 by 50 metre centres, which we've used for the pre-feasibility study uh, last year. Uh, we then closed it up to 50, uh, 25 by 25 metre centres uh, for the DFS. And recently, um, the, the hole shown in green, we've done all of the uh, grey control drilling, infill um, grey control drilling, RC on 12.5 by 12.5 metre centres, and the, the uh, resource reconciliation has been 100% positive. That grey control has been, yeah, I don't know what to mention, but it's been done for basically the next 18 months of the mining operation. So all in all, uh, this, uh, we've done um, 120,000 metres of drilling since uh, November 2004. This is some drone footage, which I'm hoping is going to work. Doesn't look like it, but um, uh, I guess the, just from the photograph you can see there, this is a shot looking north uh, over our central deposit. All the green bags there, uh, 120,000 metres, yeah, so a lot of heartache um, logging holes for all our geologists up there in, in extreme conditions. So, um, yeah, it's been a, a mammoth, mammoth effort by the exploration team over the last two years. So what's this all ended up with? Uh, we've got a, a, a large resource of 157 million tonnes at 1.25%. Uh, and again, we've got an a, a important byproduct of, of, of tantalite at uh, 128 ppm. The reserves as of June this year uh, stand at 80 million tonnes. And we're currently looking at a expansion program which will include some more drilling. Much to the dislike of all our geologists, but um, that'll be un being undertaken in the next two months of next year. Uh, with a view to expand our reserve to well over 100 million tonnes. So the development, just a quick um, a few slides on where we're at. So this is a very simple mining operation. Uh, based on our 2 million tonne per annum feasibility, uh, we're looking at a life of mine strip ratio of 4 to 1. Uh, mining is targeted to commence this month. Uh, we have mining contractors on site already. Uh, you can see here, this is just the resource model that's been developed with all the pegmatite zones. Uh, the, the central uh, ore body there is clearly the, the, the biggest uh, and mining operations will st be starting there shortly. Some of the, uh, the highlights from our, our DFS, um, it's just simply outstanding project economics. Uh, it's a, a low cost operation with cash costs around 220 US dollars per tonne. Current pricing for 6% concentrate is around 1000 dollars US per tonne, which just shows you what sort of margin this project is going to throw off over the next few years. That's just a bit of a, uh, a snapshot of, of or cartoon of the, the, the infrastructure. As you can see, it's fairly tight there. Um, all the permitting's in place. Um, again, mining contractors are, are on site. All the, the construction guys are on site, and uh, it's uh, well and truly into, into construction as we speak. Uh, this slide here is really what I want to point out here is that um, Pilgrim Minerals has done a massive amount of metallurgical test work on this deposit since basically the, uh, the first uh, sample that was sent to Anzaplan. 
Uh, we've got a pilot plant operating here in Perth and um, we've been able to generate a genuine 6% battery concentrate which will um, give us a premium price on our product um, as well as a 7% or 7.2% lithium um, product for the technical grade. Offtake, stage one offtake is all with Gang Feng and General Lithium. This is basically a, 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 a sold out really for the next 10 years from our stage one operation. Looking at some of the engineering project packages at the moment, HPJR units all finished, uh, con constructed in Germany is now sitting in Perth waiting for shipment up to Pilgrimgora filter press. There's a shot showing the water, plenty of water up there. Uh, power station under construction, that's um, well ahead of schedule uh, and will be complete by sometime in December. Footings for the ball mill and that just shot there just shows you our first little blast which was undertaken a couple of weeks ago. Looking at the layout, uh, massive uh, plant footprint um, changing rapidly every day. Um, can't quite see that but crushing areas down here. Um, all conveyor footings in there. Um, administration offices over here um, and yeah, that's um, really in, in uh, under full construction mode at the moment. Uh, the camp, 300 man camp completed uh, a couple of months ago and is fully manned at the moment. Uh, just to, again just touch on the 5 million tonne per annum expansion case. Um, just due to the overwhelming demand from our offtake partners we've decided to bring that forward. All that work is underway now. We've got some uh, a big PQ uh, diamond drilling program underway just to collect some bulk sample for metallurgical test work. Uh, a big drilling program under or planned for January, February next year. Uh, we're, the stage one project, with the which is a two million tonne per annum project, is looking at delivering 45,000 tonnes of LCE. Stage two will be delivering uh, up, up, upwards towards um, 100,000 tonnes. Uh, the, the five million tonne expansion project is fully underwritten. Uh, we've got just announced a couple of weeks ago a deal with Great Wall. Uh, I'd like to point out that's one of the first deals done by a raw materials company direct with a motor vehicle company. Uh, again, it's uh, going to be a, a 10 year offtake. Um, we've actually got about 800,000 tonnes of concentrate to deliver with the stage two project. We've only got 200,000 tonnes left and uh, we've got a number of offtake partners already lined up to take, take that. So with the expansion case, uh, we're looking at uh, getting the DFS done by the end of June and completing the rebuild, uh, or the, I guess the additional build, by the end of 2019. And really it's only from modest increase in capital. And, and again, that'll, it's all fully funded through our offtake partners. So just in summary, um, we have a, uh, a really a world-class resource. Um, it has massive upside. Um, both in the resource and the reserve. We've got a low cost operation, long life operation, all our offtake and, and funding is, has been secured and I think the company is really uh, perfectly placed to capitalise on what is quite a robust lithium outlook uh, and, and, uh, and demand. And I guess based on our, the talk we heard uh, earlier on, I think um, the pill mineral story has got to be a wonderland story. So, thank you. <laughs>